Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura in this very cute quilt with all of those large and small diamonds running up and down really are not diamonds at all. They're just squares and even better, they're made with pre-cuts. This little quilt is a lot of fun to make for a couple of reasons. We get to use a pre-cut five inch square pack and we can use a two and a half inch pack. If you don't have two and a half inch packs, we can always cut our two and a half inch squares. And we can cut them from a fat quarter or from three long strips of fabric. And in my case, I did cut them from three long strips of fabric. The rest of the quilt have these very simple shapes. So this is all we're going to need for the entire quilt. The pattern is going to be sewn in rows. But when that quilt is finished, it will be a square quilt. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 20 of these pieces that are cut two and a half inches by five inches and sew on the squares to each side. So we're going to have 20 strips that look like this. We're going to put two in each pile. The first pile we're going to have one. The second, which will be a row, will have two, three, and four. And those pieces that matched inside will go in between. We will have two there, two, two more. So we have two rows with two squares, two rows with four squares, two rows with six squares, so the squares are on the end, and two rows with eight squares. We need to sew a two and a half inch by a seven inch. So the end pieces are larger than the center piece. So each end is going to have that longer piece. We still have the eight rows, we just added those ends on. Once these are all pressed, we can put them away because we will then get to sew these other pieces together. Out of your little pack, we need to have 41 squares. This particular pack has 42, so I will just need to take out one. The charm pack that I am using is from Wilmington and it's called A Country Weekend. It's these beautiful, soft colors. Once the one has been removed, we're going to take the 41 squares and the 41 two and a half inch by five inches and sew them together so that the seam is on the left side. These pre-cuts come with this little zigzagged edge. And because of that, we need to establish where is the five inch mark. So we're gonna be able to measure this. Does the five inch come along the top of the teeth or along the bottom of the teeth. And in this case, the measurement is at the bottom of those points. So when we lay that five inch piece, we're going to see all these little teeth sticking out. We don't need to trim it. We just need to keep that in mind when we do lay up those pieces. If the measurement comes to the top of the teeth, this piece will cover all of it. So in my case, this is a generous five inch square. So I'm going to see the little teeth poking out on all of the edges as I sew it. So we don't need to trim that. We just need to line them up on the fabric that way. And that quarter inch seam allowance is going to follow this top piece, not the cut piece. So we have that seam with all of the little teeth sticking out. With the left sides done, we're going to be able to sew these units together and we're going to make some rows. The first row will only have one block in it and we're going to make two of those rows. The second row will have three blocks. We will also need two of those rows. The next five blocks. The next seven blocks. The very last row is a single row and it's going to have nine blocks. So we will have one single row and then four double rows. This is a part where you can have some fun and mix up these fabrics. 
So we're going to be able to join these pieces together to make those rows. And we will notice that on the end of one side, we will have these white strips. We need to add the white strips on the other sides. And that's going to complete those rows so that they look the same on both sides. Once all of these rows have been stitched together, we can lay them out so we have that triangular shape. So we're going to have one on each side, three on each side, five on each side, and so on. So only that one center one is different. Once we have these rows laid out, we're going to be able to put in these sashing strips. So those sashing strips will be sewn in between each row. So it'll be best if we lay them out first, but before we sew them together, we're going to add some triangles into the corners. And that way when this is trimmed down, it will make that square and that straight corner that we want. By having this laid out first, we're going to know which directions to put those triangles in. If they're sewn the wrong way, it's very obvious. So I do like to lay out these rows first. We still will have four corner triangles to put on, but we're going to put them on at the very last. But by laying them out, it definitely helps us see where those triangles are going to go. We want the flat edges to match up. So we're not going to match up that point. We're going to match up the flat edges, which really makes it easy to sew. Now we can sew down that quarter inch. Move that sashing stitch out of the way and we can see where those next triangles go on. So we're going to have triangles going in one direction and triangles going on the other. The only row that is not going to have triangles sewn onto the end is that one row that was by itself. That larger strip that had the nine squares in it will be treated as one of those corners. And we're going to see that as we go along. Once those triangles have been put on, we're going to be able to sew those rows together. But let's do a quick recap. The regular rows do have those pre-cut five inch squares with two and a half by five inch on each side and triangles. The sashing rows have two and a half inch squares. This is two and a half by five inches to match our square. But on each end of every piece, we have a little longer at seven inches. The only row that is going to be a little different is that one long center row. It just is not going to have a triangle on the side because we're going to do that after. Now we're going to be able to sew these together. The ends are not going to match and that's okay because we're going to trim them off. But all of those sashing rows will match up. So I like to sew them together in units of two and then sew twos together. We will then end up with two big triangles, which would be the top and the bottom, and that one row still in the center. And that's going to join these two pieces together. Now that all of these rows are together, we can put larger triangles on the ends and on the sides. So we started with a seven inch square, cut it in half. Now we're going to be able to just stitch that on. For the end of those two rows, which would make the sides, we already have a little piece of white and that's going to be fine. We can just stitch that right on and press it over. With those corners on, with a little twist, you can see how we've turned that into a nice square quilt. From here we can just leave it, quilt it, and then trim it afterwards. We could trim it now and put some borders on, or you could trim it and add big triangular corners on it. There are two ways you can trim this. We can trim using the points right along the larger squares, and be sure to leave that quarter inch seam allowance, but the border will go right there along that edge. Or we can leave a larger space. We can do them both ways. No matter which way we trim it or border it, 
it really is a cute little quilt. So all of those squares now look like diamonds running down the quilt. From point to point, it equals about 43 inches. So this will be a 43 inch square. We were able to use one complete stack of these five inch pre-cut squares. And if we wanted to, we could use a stack of those little tiny charm packs. For this background fabric, I would recommend getting a yard and a half. And if you're going to add a border, you'll need to add just a little bit extra. As for myself, I will quilt this first and trim it after. So those diamonds are not diamonds at all. They're just squares, two different size squares with some sashing. And we get to use our pre-cuts. Now I don't have a pattern for this, but I will put in the description the diagram on how it's laid out and my cutting directions. And hopefully you will have a chance to make this really cute and quick quilt too. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're making next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.